What does it mean to be a culturally responsible engineer? In this episode of the podcast, in honor of Black History Month, we're speaking with Julius Hudson of the National Society of Black Engineers on cultural responsibility in engineering and what the society has done for his career. Let's do it. All right, now I'd like to welcome our guest for today's episode, Julius Hudson. Julius is currently the National Professionals Chair of the National Society of Black Engineers, and he's also a practicing civil engineer. Julius, welcome to the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. Oh, thank you for having me, Anthony. So, Julius, just to get us started off for today, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about your engineering career and kind of what you do on a day-to-day basis? Uh, Sure. Um, I currently reside in Dallas. I am a civil engineer, um, graduated from Prairie View A&M University. been working in the civil engineering space for about the last 18 years. Um, After getting my degree, went back home to Chicago to work a little bit in that same space, getting some good construction experience. Uh, Came back down to the South, uh, where I reside in Dallas and have been since 06, 05. And um, been working with different companies and different projects here in, in the Dallas Metroplex area. Uh, luckily to still be in, in the space of civil engineering um, as my profession. And then now I, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad and a husband. Uh, That's a another job of itself, I know that. <laughs> yeah, dad of a three-year-old and, and, and a husband of, a, of an educator. So okay. um, we're just living here in Dallas and enjoying it. Great. That's awesome. And, you know, we're going to talk about your role at the National Society of Black Engineers in a moment. I mean, it's Black History Month. However, before we get there, your LinkedIn profile says that you are a STEM advocate. Tell me more about okay. that. Okay. Um, I mean, ever since even even high school, going before I went to college to to start in engineering, um, I went to high school at Whitney Young, and it was a college prep high school, and it really involved us in the STEM field. So ever since then, I've been interested in STEM. Um, luckily, I've been afforded the opportunity to develop a career in it. Uh, and I see its its fruits, you know, from a from a experience, from a monetary perspective, just everything, um, from actually seeing things from beginning to end. So, as a STEM advocate, you know, through my extracurricular activities and also through my employment, I try to continue to give back to uh, those that are coming up, you know, right behind me, or either some that are further down the line, like maybe in in high school, um, and really promote STEM uh, science. Uh, technology, engineering, and math um, as as a ch- as a field of choice, um, as some exciting things to do, you know, and other opportunities uh, for the young high school kids to kind of go into outside of sports. So really, just promoting what STEM is from a functionality perspective, um, and then also you know holistically from a, from a career perspective. So just really an advocate for that STEM space. That's great. And you said that you know. You enjoy giving back. And another way that you give back, of course, is you're involved at the national level with the National Society of Black Engineers or NSBE. What is NSBE? Tell us about that organization. Oh, great. Um, NSBE, NSBE, uh, the National Society of Black Engineers, is an organization that was really started in 1975 um, by the nickname Chicago Six. Those were six um, engineering students at Purdue University. And it started in 75. As you know, around that time, it's heavy in segregation and um, uh, racism and things of that sort. And to have engineering students in a prestige university like that needed to really find a common ground to to kind of help each other. So they actually started uh, Nesby, as what you see in 2020. Um, so it, it started uh, there on that on the campus, and it's it's matriculated to like over 300 collegiate chapters, um, maybe 88 professional chapters. But the mission of Nesby is uh, to really increase the number of socially of culturally responsible Black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and uh, positively impact the community. And it was started, ironically, by college students. 
And that's really the biggest thing, thing or fact that people don't know about Nesby. It's the largest collegiate ran or collegiate governed organization in the United States. Um, uh, my national chair, I am the chairman of the professional brand, branch of, of the society, but my national chair is a doctorate student. Um, wow. And in some years, you know, they're actually, you know, collegiate students who are getting their bachelor's or even master's. So it varies, you know, throughout the years. Um, but that's a very important piece of the society because, I mean, even now we're managing $13 million budget. Um, and it's kind of mm-hmm. amazing to know that, that, you know, this is really ran by college students. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, I, I had no idea. And, you know, that's kind of why I wanted to have you on the show was, you know, being that it's Black History Month. And I think a lot of engineering professionals aren't aware of NISB. And even there's other organizations like NISB that have done a lot of really good work. And it's uh-huh. really interesting to hear that it came from college students and has gone into such, become such a big, oper- a big operation at this point, as you mentioned. And talk about your experience with NISB. How did you get involved from the beginning? Um, based in its root, I was introduced to Nesby while I was in college. Uh, I was a freshman in college, um, went to a historically black college, um, just saw a lot of guys, you know, com- competing in different competitions on campus and saw that Nesby was very prevalent. Um, that was my first introduction to it, but because of my work schedule and other things you had to do in college, I really didn't participate and get the full benefit of Nesby while I was in undergrad. So I'm one of those few members that really got engaged once I became a professional. So when I moved to Dallas, I really got in LinkedIn with the professional chapter. And a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of the professional chapters really start off by mentoring and being that source of that resource for the different colleges in the area. So I started off as a college initiative chair there, um, uh, where that's essentially what I did. I really was the, I guess you would say the middle person between the collegiate um, members in the DFW Metroplex to the professional members just to try to bridge that gap, you know, provide some of the soft skills and just really, you know, just be a, a, a professional in that city. Uh, since Nesby is a uh, international organization, different people from different cities could land in Dallas. You know, they may not have went to school in Dallas and, you know, they may just need to have a network to kind of get involved. So, that was my start, really being that avenue, helping uh, the collegiate chapters start a, a few uh, younger professionals, more more so the pre-college chapters, and really just um, giving back to them and being a resource and introducing them to the professionals. And what made you, Julius, at what point did you decide that this is an organization that I really want to get more involved with? Um, first day. It was it was really, because like I said, I, I'm, a, I'm a STEM advocate. I love I love that part. You know, that is really my bread and butter of why I became a member, of, uh, active member of Nesby, is that it provides me with that vehicle to to help younger younger upcoming professionals. So, once I I saw that 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 opportunity, uh, once I really bought into the mission uh, and actually saw it work, and you know, it's really easy to see results when you when you deal in, in this kind of demographic, because you know you got four years before you matriculate into a professional. And you can see, you can mentor someone as a freshman and, 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 and four years out of college, and you say, okay, you've made a difference in that person's uh, career choice. Um, so it was really from, from the start. saw the impact and really enjoyed it. Hmm. Now, you went to school, I think we're similar in age. So you were in college probably like around 20 years ago, you know, 15 to 20 years ago when you first got involved with NISPE. Uh-huh. Yourself as a, as a student, as a black engineer, did you find that there were you know, challenges because of that and NISPE helped you with that? Or do you think that, you know, just trying to you know, get your feel for how the society impacted you as you were going through college? Did it give you extra support? Um, it provided, again, I, I can speak vicariously through my colleagues. Right. Um, because I saw, you know, I, I felt as a professional, I missed a big opportunity in participating heavily in college right. in NISPE. But just living through my colleagues and 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 also seeing the impact that 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 Nesby has now with college students, and we really look at Nesby as a family. You know, we mm-hmm. really have a, a thing we call Nesby love, because it, it it's not just you know I have a curriculum to follow and I and I and I go through there. 
a lot of times as a as a college student, you get connected to your next intern opportunity or your next full time, or even taking it to the simple fact of when you're in college, you know, just getting through the rigorous rigorous courses that you have in engineering, you know, to have like minded people bounded by just the society of really really joined together by the struggles of engineering. You know, engineering, as, as you know, is not an easy, easy, easy thing. So to actually have, you know, a, a collective unit, a collective group of, of people that are struggling through at the same time, that builds a family. Right. And, uh, you know, from a, from a collegiate standpoint, that's how you got from freshman to senior year. And then from a professional standpoint, I mean, I couldn't tell you how many networking opportunities for the next job. I, the job that I'm in now, I got unofficially. It wasn't like I went to a career fair and things like that. I just, I knew the guy, you know, we networked and he, you know, then our paths crossed. I've been with this company for eight years, you know, starting the business. Uh, So it's really those things that are very hard to measure. But if you probably reach out to any NSBE member, I guarantee you have a story similar to that that relates to family. So that's, that's, that's essential to the society. Now, there are other professional societies out there, many great ones, and I'm sure you're involved with other societies potentially to whatever level. Uh-huh. What's different about NISBE for you? It's not, well, in some societies, the NISBE is not always about the number. It's truly invested in its membership. Um, and some of the other organizations, you know, I, just as a, as a person who wants to give back in general, you kind of do some of the same things, but it's not designed. You know, our programming is designed in NSBE to foster the next leaders. You know, right. it's truly designed to empower, you know, empower members as, as, as young as as young as third grade. You know, wow. we have three demographics. We have a we have a pre-college NSBE junior demographic, the college demographic and the professional demographic. And, you know, encompassing the same mission. I mean, uh, you don't really the goals will be the same in some of the other societies or, or organizations that I'm a part of, but the application and how the members within those organizations contribute is, is a lot different. And I would say Nesby by far, you get invested. It's a truly, it's a true human investment into the society, um, which makes it a little bit different than some others. It feels like a family, like you said before. Mm-hmm. So in terms of helping, you know, you mentioned earlier on that NISBE is really focused on, you know, cultivating leaders, right? Mm-hmm. And h- helping your members to really be those leaders um, to really, I believe the mission is around um, increasing the number of black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. How does NISBE do that? specifically there are there reach out ways or there ways to support like what are what does that look like what is the framework for that look like um well it, it's kind of three things that we hit you know the first part is uh increasing the number of culturally responsible uh, it, it's it's really in in our name uh the national society of black engineers uh, based on kind of what i stated how 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 we were founded and and the need for the society at that at that moment it's it's really integral to keep that as we progress and even now into the future because the times are different um, but some struggles can be comparable so that cultural piece is really really embedded in the programming that we do um uh from a from an aspect of um responsible black engineers who say academically of course uh with um these leadership opportunities um it's like a board of directives um we break them broken up into six regions. Each one of those regions have their own boards. These are all high visible visible training grounds for the next executive leader. Um, so these opportunities for college students to participate in these positions are available. So that's um, that's that's one of the ways we do it. But then we also do it in our programming as well. We have Right now, Nesby is on an initiative to uh, have 10K, it's called 10K by 2025. And what that is, is we want to graduate 10,000 uh, black engineers annually by the year 2025. And this was brought upon because of uh, some surveys and studies that were 
that we looked at back in 2013 that, that had the average um, engineering, uh, ad, ad, average number of engineers graduating was about close to like 3,600 okay. a year. Um, happy to say now we're close to like 5,500 wow. uh, a year. Um, but, you know, still keeping that goal if you do the math quick, we, we, we're trending up, but we're, we're not going to hit that number mm-hmm. unless we do some, some more creative things, uh, which, which um, the leadership here in Nesby are just really actively looking at ways to kind of increase that number even more. Um, so that initiative is key. Uh, we feel that if we position people, because retention is key. Right. We get a lot of, lot of engineers, a lot of people that come, not even a lot, it's not a lot, but you get a good amount of students that get into the field of engineering, but the retention piece is not there. Um, so we work with universities, uh, we work with partnering organizations like uh, um, SWE and, and SHIP, sure. um, who have similar similar missions, um, just to increase that number. And it's not just because of the number, it's, it's, it's because we, we feel that once we have that 10K by 2025, you will really see an impact um, from the uh, black community in in the fields of STEM because we have more access. That's awesome. Wow. I mean, it's great to hear that. I mean, you really have a clear goal and a clear focus and, you know, a goal like that where you say, you know, 10,000 engineers each year, to me, even if it's a lofty goal, it's great to have such a defined goal because then you have all mm-hmm. the people on your board really focused on that. Each year you can see the progress you're making and, you know, it yeah. really, you know, inspires people and pushes them forward, which is great. One question that I have for you in terms of, you know, if I'm assuming, let's say there's engineers that are listening. They might be interested in this. Okay. What, what is, when you say culturally responsible, talk about that mm-hmm. term a little bit. What does that mean? You know, why, why, why maybe use those words? Talk to us about that. Cause that to me, that sounds really interesting. It sounds like a really great kind of goal to kind of move forward. Culturally responsible, it's kind of, this is, this is my interpretation of, of what I feel and what I breathe in the, mission, in the mission. But when I feel, or when I say culturally responsible, I have a responsibility to, um, to myself and I have a responsibility to, to African Americans to assist where, where I can. And I, and I feel that and I buy into that because it happened to me. You know, I, I actually got assistance from this or got assistance from my dad or or other colleagues in my university so the responsibility is really on us to provide avenues to to introduce uh, soften the load make easy um, expose uh, the next generation to stem you know to to the science um, this is the basis of so many things that we actually do use and um, include in our everyday lives. So um, it is it is my responsibility culturally to actually do that. Uh, and in doing that, you know, it's, it's a holistic, it's a holistic health, a holistic approach. But I really do have to keep in mind that because of some of the struggles that we do have as African Americans in the STEM field and in, 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 in society when we become professionals, it, you know, every, every little bit helps and every, every network helps. So uh, keeping that cultural peace uh, is, is, like I said, I think earlier, is very important. Yeah, you know, I agree with you, and that that's why I was asking the question. And I think that, I think that just for everyone, you know, knowing, learning about your heritage and your background, and being able to oh. any way you can apply it into your career, into what you do on a daily basis, I think is a very important thing. I mean, I have my 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 great grandfather came here from Italy early 1900s and I took a lot of time trying to learn about you know his Uh what he went through and it's been helpful for me in my career and and that's why you know I really like what you said there and that you feel like there's a responsibility to give back and you know NISBY for you provides an avenue to do that which is great Uh there are also great organizations like you mentioned the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers the Society for Women Engineers um, that we've, you know, done some work with as well. So there are, there are societies and there are groups out there for you of engineers in all cultures. And it's important to find those people like 
Julia said, they can become like a family to you in terms of your career development, your support, your progression. And that's really why we wanted to, you know, take some time during Black History Month to highlight Nisby and have Julius on to talk a little bit about his experience um, and how it's helped them and how, you know, groups like this can help you in your career. So Julius, before we let you go, how can our listeners find out more about Nisby? Assuming go to the website and they can check it out there. Right. Yeah, that that will be the first the first uh, opportunity. If you go to www.nsbe.org, um, this is really the main hub of where you can connect with uh, Nesby holistically. Um, as stated, we are in six different regions across the United States, which also are, we have some international chapters um, in Ghana and, and other areas. Um, and then it also ties you into um, access to one of one of our, I guess, um, I would call it a huge event that Nesby actually puts on each year is our national conference, um, where it's going to be in San Antonio this year, um, from March twenty third, March twenty fifth to uh, the twenty eighth, twenty ninth, and last it's in different locations each year. Last year we were in Detroit and we actually had over 15,000 uh, Nesby members in the city uh, wow. throughout that full five, four to five day conference. And, you know, of course we, we uh, generate, you know, revenue for the city, but the biggest thing is that we have those three demographics that I expressed, the Nesby junior, the, the collegiate and also the professionals all in one area. And we have a huge career fair, you know, it's over like 350 companies, wow. um, Fortune 500 companies there looking to hire on the spot. You know, this is one of the biggest draws for our collegiate students is that they get a chance to, you know, get opportunities with any company you can name uh, looking to hire talent on the spot. So um, this is going to be in San Antonio this year. Um, it, it moves around each year. So this is another way that uh, if you're in that area, um, of course, we're on different social media platforms as well, um, using kind of the same tash, hashtags of uh, NSBE or Great. either NSBE professionals. Awesome. All right, Julius, one last question for you. From your experience with NSBE, for you personally, you know, what has been okay. kind of the most positive, what's been the most positive experience that you've taken away from NSBE or, you know, what's been most impactful for you about the whole experience? Um, well, I talked about just my experience about Nesby, um, but being in now, I guess you would call the executive role of a national director uh, for the professionals and other roles leading up to that. Uh, it's just really uh, a good opportunity to serve. I mean, it's been challenging, but in those challenges, the rewards are better. Um, getting the chance to actually develop strategic practices to reach our goals, uh, working with great teams each year. Um, you know, meeting different members with different disciplines in engineering over the years. Um, don't know where I would have gotten that kind of exposure uh, with so many talented, talented people. So it's really, it's it's the story behind Nesby, but it's also the road getting into it is what I really appreciate. Um, uh, and then actually seeing the results afterwards. That's awesome. Well, Julius Hudson, Julius is the National Professionals Chair of the Society of National Society of Black Engineers, and he's a practicing civil engineer. And Julius, thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. It was a pleasure to have you. Anthony, I appreciate the invite. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave your comments and or questions in the comments section below this video. Also, if you'd like to view the full show notes for this episode, visit engineeringmanagementinstitute.org or see the link in the video description. There you will find the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during the episode. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering career endeavors.